This conference will now be recorded. Good evening to all present for uh, today's session. I hope my voice is audible to all of you and the screen is also clearly visible, being displayed. Okay. So in the previous class we had discussed up uh, yeah, tell me ma'am. Ma'am, before you start today's class, can you just give a brief of that physical talk from yesterday's class? Which is a physical stock watcher? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you the one who is not clear or is there anyone else uh, for physical stock watchers? Okay, so anyone wants, apart from the physical stock, uh, what, is there any other clarity for any other watcher? So let me know in the chat box or uh, you can put up your doubts by unmuting yourself. Okay. Of course, uh, physical stock watcher, of course, I would explain to uh, you, uh, Kashish, but uh, let me finish uh, some segments of GST and then I'll get back to physical stock watchers, uh, which, which will be in the last uh, half hour in case of any watchers, mm, it, is it is left unclear. So by the time er everyone would have any other doubts, you can just ask me in the last half hour so that we can clear up the doubts uh, in that time. I hope it's okay for all of you. Okay, so let's begin the session for the day. Right. So coming to the accounting of uh, supply of services, which we had done in the previous session, that after enabling GST in the company, one can record the inward and the outward supply of services using the purchase voucher for receiving services and the sale of services using a sales voucher. So I told you that how we treat the vouchers for the goods, so the same way we treat them for the services as well. Okay, so... Right, so in the same way we had also passed the voucher for the same. Uh, now we move on for accounting of uh, exempted services. So what do we understand by the term exempted? Now we have exempted goods as well as exempted services in GS, under GST. So basically what do we mean by the term exempted? Exempted services are the services which are not subject to tax. An exempt supply means any goods or services or both which attract a nil rate of tax or that may be wholly exempt from tax including a non-taxable supply. So an exempt supply includes a supply of following types of goods which are they. Supplies attracting nil rate of tax, supplies wholly exempt from tax and we also have uh, non-taxable supplies. So how do we view or which are the, uh, which is the list of the exempted list of goods or services? Let's have a check on that. Yes, so here we have some of the common goods which are GST exempt for live animals, for meat. <coughs> vegetables, fruits, dry fruits, tea, coffee and spices, grains, seeds, sugar, water, 
all these are products which have fine exemption under GST. The beauty products, waste, ornaments. Ornaments, we have this plastic and glass bangles, not the gold one because gold is subject to 3% GST. Then we have the newsprint, potteries and all. Now if you come for the services, of course we have a huge list of services if you observe. We have agricultural services, government based services, transportation services, we have uh, judicial services, education, medical services, other services. They just listed out in brief but we have a elaborated list of exemption services. Probably I can show you a much more elaborative uh, ones under GST. So here, the thing is, how does this exemption happen? Which are the goods which face exemption under GST? So here we have, I think we have given just a few ones. As I told, same thing. Fruits and vegetables, cereals, meat, uh, fish, potatoes, other tumors and roots, tender coconut, tea leaves, jaggery, coffee beans, ginger, milk and curd. Again, if you take raw materials, you have silk waste, straw silk, jute fiber, cotton for Kadi yarn, miscellaneous uh, expenses, human blood, vaccines, earthen pots, we have live animals, maps, books, journals, newspapers, kites, puja properties. So all these uh, are subject to exemption. Now, if we talk about the goods, we have an exhaustive list of exemptions. But when, if I talk about the services, we have a huge list. As I told, they have just spotted out. Like we have agriculture, transportation services, government-based uh, services, healthcare, educational services, so uh, and religious-based services, then electricity supply services and all that. So all these services are exempted under GST. So here, the same meaning if I carry here, means any goods or services which attract nil. So what happens, they don't attract any rate of tax under GST, it is nil. So now what is the difference between exempted and non-GST? See, exempted services will find a place in the GST tariff. But if I talk about the non-GST products, commodities and services, they are not within the ambit of GST. Henceforth, they don't find a place even in the GST tariff. So what I mean is, once they find a place in the GST tariff, they are obviously uh, given or they are being named through a Hutchison code for uh, goods and for SAC for services. But if I talk about the non-GST uh, uh, commodities, okay, they don't have any Hutchison or SAC codes because they stand outside the ambit of GST. So this is the difference between exempted and non-GST. Both are not the same. So I'll just put off, uh, put forward again that the exempted goods and exempted services, you know, uh, find a place or appear in the GST tariff. Okay, though against these goods and services, uh, there is no specific rate of tax applicable. Obviously, they're subject to nil rate of tax, but still, they find a place in the GST tariff in the list of uh, goods and services, and henceforth they have a Hutchison code or the SAC code, depending upon whether they are goods or they are services. Now, if I talk about the non-GST based commodities or services, they don't find a place in the GST tariff because they stand outside the ambit of GST. So, there is no question of any Hutchison or the SAC codes. Right? So, these are the exempted services. So, based on this, we will take a small example. Uh, to pass the entries in tally. Yes. So one of the exempted services I've taken is agricultural services. So the company provides agricultural services to uh, KK farms for rupees 50 
and this service is exempt from GST. <coughs> so here if I talk about uh, KK farms we have provided agricultural services to KK farms for 50,000 now agricultural services face exemption we also saw in the list you know that agricultural services also belong to the exempted services list category so here how do we treat the same now here I've given when we are creating the ledger for agricultural services what kind of GST classification has to be given it has to be given as sales exempt okay so that's most important because the GST classification itself is the turning point here uh, before passing the entry so let's go for the same so here when the company is providing agricultural services which means it is rendering services selling services and henceforth it has to be recorded in which voucher it is sales voucher sale of services agricultural services so let's go for it yes so in case for you in the sales voucher if uh, name of the item quantity rate is appearing I think I would repeat it again that is the item invoice mode what you what you're watching so if you have to convert or change it into the uh, accounting invoice mode okay so control H if you press control H which is change a voucher mode option over here you have to select accounting invoice mode if it is already accounting invoice mode you can leave it it is the right mode in which we have to pass service based uh, uh, service oriented entries in case if it is item mode, again? press control H from sales voucher you get the list of modes or usages in that you have to choose accounting invoice mode center on that and now you are able to get party account name particulars date and amount okay so now to whom we have provided agricultural services it is KK farms so what we have to do is we have to create a ledger in the name of KK farms so I have to go to the create option KK farms sundry letters <coughs> maintain balances uh, bill by bill as yes give the GST registration number of KK farms Set the to GST as yes. Here, there is nothing to change, so the details are updated. So just press Control A. And now we have accept yes. accept yes and now here also I think I've shown you a couple of times the dispatch details you can fill up the same but here since it is service based probably like you can give the document number like we are not dispatching through any van or something because the service which is being provided probably raw materials you would have dispatched so based on that can be given otherwise this holds not that much importance because it is a service and here, of course, KK Farms the party details. In the particulars column, you have to create the ledger for agricultural services. So I'll go to the create option here. Yes, and here it is agricultural services.
enter. Now here, uh, as my main business activity is providing agricultural services, or one of the business activities is providing agricultural services, we will consider the same as sale of services because I'm rendering my services and service providing is my uh, business activity. So I, I would not uh, construe the same as a direct or indirect income, okay? Rather, I would take it as sale of services. So I'll take it as sales. So take it up, take up now the same as sales. Okay. Cost center no. GST applicable. Yeah, here you have to be very careful. Is GST applicable? Set or alter GST as yes. Now in the description, you have to give it as agricultural services. Now here, so which we have to give? Is it Hutchison or SAC? It is SAC code. So what is the SAC code for agricultural services? Let's have a check. is double nine eight six one nine or you can take the main chapter the main outlet as double nine eight six okay yes that would suffice or double nine eight six that is better is non GST you no know? yes so here you have to be very careful you have to choose as sales exempt once we choose sales exempt what happened it will come back to the ledger creation window instead of going elsewhere excuse me ma'am can ah. you please repeat since I'm not getting the GST detail like so can you tell me what should I do in that configuration? Like what should I change? Which one? In the legislation yeah. you're asking? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, like if you uh, press enter when you write yes, you get yeah. like many things. Like I'm not getting all of this. Like I'm just getting some nature of the uh, transaction, tax detail and tax type. Huh. So the Hutchison or the SAC, all these things you're not able to get? No, ma'am. So what you should do is just press F12 configuration. Yes, ma'am. Uh, here, here you activate the first two features and the last two features. Okay, cool. okay thank you, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you press cool. configuration. Okay. Okay, so here. You see, see what happens. Once I give it a sales exempt, it will not allow me to come to the tax type. Why? It is sales exempt and there is no question of giving a tax, particular tax rate. Like 5%, 12%, 18 or whatever. So it is always 0 if you take it as sales exempt. So enter, enter. Here, type of supply we have to select as services. So enter, accept, okay. 
So what is the total value of the services that has been rendered? Let's check. It is 50,000. So 50,000 is the total value of the services. So I'll have 50,000 in the amount column. Enter. Now here in the tax classification details, I have to choose sales except. Okay, so now, since it is sales exempt, <coughs> even though if we try to put up the CGST and the SGST details, it will not hold. Why? Because it has been categorized, classified as sales exempt. So if, even if I give it as CGST, it will not hold. Okay, that's why I told the GST classification is the turning point or the, it plays a crucial role here. Wrong GST classification then of course the entry also will be automatically wrong. So the net is 50,000. Press enter. You get the bill wise details. Yes, over here you can take up, you can take it up as on account. Amount 50,000. Enter. Enter. So here being agricultural services provided to KK farms KK farms in the brackets can be given as exempt, exempt service. It is required otherwise. And payment received immediately. Like this, you'll type the narration and pass the entry. Okay, accept, yes. Yes. So like this, we go for the accounting of exempted services. Okay. So... Of course, now uh, before going on for the new concept uh, in tally, of course, now, um, so uh, I, I think I told I would clear at 7, but uh, it's better. Uh, and now I just want to re clarify again, confirm again that uh, apart from the physical stock vouchers, and I think one more configuration based uh, regarding the GST, I think I'd got one of the questions. Uh, any other clarification? If you would like to have, you can have it. So by the time I solve these two. Now, if you aren't able to get the classification details, like the tax classification details, what we see normally here, right? Uh, so here we have, let me select Aman Enterprises. Right, so here... Yes, I'm, I was talking about the classification details. If you, are, if you aren't able to get this tax classification, I always tell you to press F12 configuration, not from here, but from the sales voucher screen. And there, if you're not getting this feature, modify tax rate details of GST, you're just getting a low tax difference up to, you're not getting this feature. So what you have to do is, okay, this is for, uh, I think, Disha had uh, posed a question. So, what has to be done for the classification? Yes. So, in case I'm not able to get. 
So that time you have to press F. Uh, is the shack active? Disha A Sha. Disha H Sha, sorry. No? Okay. So I think the person is not evident here. Fine. In case, uh, since the recordings will be available. So I'll just show it. If this is all applicable for all of you. In case if uh, the classification is not appearing. Now, usually in the tally software, the GST, the GST activation is already done uh, and we not again activate the GST but in case you're not getting the, the GST based uh, classification then what you can do is you can press F11 not on configuration you have to press F11 here uh, from sales voucher so if you press F11 uh, already the GST part is activated enable GST it is yes already so you just go to that feature, <coughs> press enter. Now here, it's already activated for, for the user. Now in case if the classification is not appearing, usually it will appear. What can be done is, you can just go for enable GST classification and make it as yes here. Press enter here then control A because there's nothing else to change it is auto active uh, auto uh, configured activated GST so what you have to do is you have to just enable this enable GST classification as yes okay and then again control A you save the changes and now here in the F12 configuration you would see the details now for me it's already appearing because it's been made but for those who are not getting this feature, which is that feature I have told that modify tax A details of GST in case you're not getting, you're only getting this feature that is allow tax difference up to. So once you activate there, obviously you will get this feature of modify tax A details of GST. Okay. So I'm, I hope I'm clear uh, for the doubts asked uh, in, uh, with regards to GST. Now if I talk about the physical stock watchers, Okay, um, physical stock vouchers, what role does it play? What happens is, if you go for a physical stock voucher, uh, we are going to stock verify the quantity, what is available in the go down, in the warehouse. We are going to cross check, verify and the same, we have to update in our company's books of accounts. Now in the company's books of accounts, if the stocks, let's say, we'll take a small example of, I'll give an example of washing machines. So let me go for it. So if the stocks... Hearing in the go down let's say is 30 pieces you can take any example any stock item a washing machine or chairs tables whatever it is so I'm just giving a you know a general example. The stocks appearing in the go down is 30 pieces. Stocks as shown in the company's books is Pieces. So stocks appearing in the go down is 30 pieces, but stocks as shown in the company's books is how much? 35 pieces. Now, in your company's books, it is showing as 35. 
in the go down it is showing as 30 now when you go for the actual stock verification it is 30 pieces so we have to correct the quantity what is available in the go down in the company's books now my company's books is the tally software right our books of accounts my accounting software so how do i update in tally software that actually i'm having 30 pieces of the stocks not 35 pieces so to update that can i use a purchase voucher i'm not purchasing anything can i use a sales voucher no i'm not selling anything i cannot use any other voucher so i, I only one voucher can be used that is physical stock voucher okay so which is control F7 so once I use a physical stock voucher yes so once I use a physical stock voucher I can correct the actual quantity of stock what is available in the go down in the company's book so that I can go for the current updation so for the same purpose we use a physical stock voucher right so what do I do is I would go for the vouchers I would press Control F7 you can consider not only a Whirlpool washing machine you you take into consideration any stock space bar let's say uh, I come to the ledger books here so currently I'm having currently what is the stock I'm having here 250 ledger books now out of 250 actually I see that around 50 books, you know, are being uh, damaged. No, the I did not get physical stock. Huh. I'm explaining about the physical stock. Is it Kashish? Uh, Ma'am, what should I press for physical stock? Oh, it's Control F7. okay ma'am thank you so much okay so when you come to the physical stock voucher let's have just chosen here ledger books so currently I'm having 250 numbers let me make a small assumption that out of 250 books 50 books are damaged either the binding is torn the pages are torn or it is an unruled book which is not required reasons can be anything so now if when and so suppose if I take it as a damage itself the main concern so out of 250 books I would have returned 50 books back I only received 200 books so that time I can consider that I'm having only 200 books and not 50 books because 50 books have sent it back like that we can correct so previously it was showing as 250 books and now after passing a physical stock voucher Correcting that the go down quantity is only 200 not 250 books and the company's books also it is 200 books I'll go for a physical stock. So narration will be as being Ledger books Stock verified Being ledger book stock verified from the go down and updated in the company's books. So this is how we give up the narration being ledger book stock verified from the go down and updated in the company's book. So once we type the narration and we pass the entry now what happens currently it was showing as 250 I think it's it's evident for all of you now what will happen is instead of 250 it will show only as 200 which we can see up in the stock query report okay so I accept yes or you can check out in any other report so I'll go to let me go to a stock summary report only here uh, in the reports column beneath the profit and loss account so if I go to the stock summary can you see here we have notebooks so, so how much it has been showing now it is showing as 200 notebooks and not 250 so this is the effect what a physical stock voucher gives 
okay so i hope it's clear uh, for the ones who had doubt when who were not clear about the physical stock voucher Yes, so now we move on to the next segment of inter of uh, here is creation of new voucher types. So what do we mean by this a creation of new voucher types? Now, before explaining this, okay, already Tally would have created the different set of vouchers to enable the user to pass transactions. Now all of us have used Contra, Payment, Received, Journal, Purchase, Sales, Debit Note, Credit Note, Stock Journal, Physical Stock Vouchers. Now how are all these vouchers appearing? Because all these voucher types are created by the Tally software itself. So we just use those vouchers to pass the uh, entries to pass the transactions of our business. Now, in addition to the vouchers already existing in the Tally software, a user will have all the liberty to create a voucher type of his own based upon his business requirement. Yes, so in addition to the predefined voucher types already existing in the Tally Prime software, a user in addition can create his own voucher type based upon his business requirement. So don't you think it is a very interesting uh, concept? So based on my uh, business requirement, if I don't have to set up a new voucher, I can go for the same. Okay. So here I've given a small explanation for creation of a new voucher type. In Tally Prime, there are predefined voucher types available to record the transactions. One can create voucher types to suit specific requirements using the predefined voucher type as the base. So before creating the new voucher types, let us view the predefined voucher types which are already available to record the entries. Okay, so let's go back to the tally screen. Yes. So here I can go to the chart of accounts, voucher types, yes, so totally how many voucher types we have, so you have to keep uh, an eye on the numbers of the default creations. Now here we have 24 predefined voucher types in tally. Now how many default groups are existing in tally, I think I have discussed it long back. How many default groups do exist in Tally? One, two, three, how many? Okay, 28, maybe. Very, very good. It is 28. Very good. Okay, which is the default cost category? It is cost category. Which is the default cost category? Let me see who is going to answer this. All these are very, very important for you. The default creations. It is, which one? Ma'am, is it sales? Sales. Cost category, ma. Primary, ma. Very good. Super. It's primary cost category. So, and all these you should well, very well remember, which are the default ledgers. This obviously all of us would realize it is cash and 
ledgers, the other one it is profit and loss account. So like this default ledgers, default groups, default cost category, okay, default currency, Indian rupees, okay. All these are default creations, default location. So which is the default location? Recently I've created locations or go down. So which was the default one? Which you saw? Main it is location. Main location. Very good. It is main location. So like this, you have to have a grip of all the default creations. So the same way, now here I am showing you the default or already existing or the predefined voucher type syntax. And how many they are? They are 24. 24, you need not uh, put across which are the vouchers are there. That's not important. Probably the, again, the uh, total number, like how, how many we have. We have 24 predefined voucher types. That's more than sufficient because a few of the vouchers are like uh, on a professional level based. So which we are not accessing, like it, it depends upon on, on which area you're going for it. Otherwise, almost all vouchers, leaving a couple of them, we have covered. Okay, so totally we have, we have 24 predefined voucher types in tally. Okay, now in addition to the 24 predefined voucher types in tally, if a user, nothing but a business uh, has to create a voucher type for meeting his business uh, requirements transactions, he can do so. So, let's go for it. So I've also shown you one more path here where we can go from the gateway of tally to the altar under accounting masters we have the voucher types. Yes. So here we are creating a new voucher type and recording transactions and tally for the same. Now here I, uh, I have selected a bank payment voucher type. So we're going to create a bank payment voucher type and tally. So for what purpose am I creating this bank payment voucher type? Now all of us know, all of us have this fact that every company will have a business account. Yes, every company will have a corporate bank account from which it will disburse salaries, uh, payment of expenses, payment of any uh, taxes, complete I can say, uh, towards the purchase of the assets, purchase of stock. So every company will have its own bank account so every time whenever it has to regulate a payment for the transactions this all of us have experienced that we go to the payment voucher f5 then uh, from there we select the bank account then the ledger and we have to pass the entry now this is the procedure uh, we have followed but now let us give a small updation for that which means instead of selecting a payment voucher every time whenever there is a transaction involved okay what a, what a business can do what a company can do is it can create its own user defined voucher type which is bank payment voucher type so what purpose does this bank payment voucher type serve as I told, instead of selecting the bank account every time whenever I pass the entry, at one stretch, I can record all the entries that uh, takes place per day or whatever the period and at one go I can process all the entries. So for me it is not time consuming, correct? It is time saving. Second is instead of using a couple of vouchers of payment voucher, I will use only one voucher. For 10 transactions now for 10 transactions if i try to pass uh, 5 or 10 vouchers for this by using the second I, I need to pass only one voucher so that is a creation of bank payment voucher type so how do we go for the same uh, we have from gateway of tally we go to masters create and voucher types and at the bottom also i've shown you that which are the features you have to work or you have to activate up so your name is bank payment, type of voucher, payment voucher. So now what is this type of voucher? Let me explain to, to you when, you, when I come for the 
voucher type creation screen. Yeah. So let's come back to the gateway of tally. And over here, we'll go to the create option. <coughs> We go to the voucher type. So we are in the voucher type creation window. Now type it as bank payment voucher. type of voucher it is payment voucher so why a payment voucher is selected here now the payment voucher I uh, come back to the list these list of voucher types actually they're all the primary vouchers they're all the already existing predefined voucher types you can define as the primary voucher types or the parent voucher types now what you're creating as bank payment voucher it is a sub voucher I can say without the foundation without the base of the primary uh, set of vouchers a sub voucher uh, cannot be created in tally so it is a must and should that we have to give the right type of voucher uh, for the voucher types which you have created so here I have considered as a bank payment voucher select type of voucher is payment voucher Abbreviation, if you wish, you could change it either as uh, BK, Bank PYMT, can be done. Enter. Activate this voucher type as yes. Method of voucher numbering, it is automatic. Then come straight to the name of the class. come to the arrive at the name of the class so here now what you have to do a small homework that now as I told that every company will have its corporate bank account right a bank account to regulate salary to disperse salaries and to make all the payments now here for today's session here we have um, here we have to link a particular bank account in the name of the class that is assuming that this particular bank account is our company's bank account okay so here what you will do is press alt G that is go to option if you go to the go to option you have the cash or the bank book press enter on the cash or bank book yes so here you get the cash and bank summary now here if I go and verify in Canada Bank I'm having 10 HDFC banks 63,500 ICICI bank 6,73,500 syndicate bank 40 okay now here so here I would assume that uh, ICICI bank is my company's bank account because it is having a sufficient bank balance okay so I'll just press the escape key yes so here 
in the name of the class I will put up as ICICI Bank assuming the uh, same ICICI Bank is the company's bank account so once you press enter yes you will immediately get this class of ICICI Bank Now here we have a feature as use class for cost center based, bank, uh, based bank, bank calculations. For a few of you it may not appear, for a few of you it appears it's fine, not an issue. I'll just explain this concept. So what is this use class for cost center based bank allocations? Now suppose if the company is having its uh, bank account let's say in more than one branch. One is, one is in uh, near Richmond Circle, the other is in Jayanagar Four Block, and one more branch is in Lavely Road. So here, like this, if there are two three branches of the same, uh, you know, if, if, if it is maintained of the company's bank account, so then you have to activate the cost center feature otherwise if the company is very particular that for this particular uh, bank account like you made it only in one branch then you can take it as no okay now here we have exclude these groups and include these groups now here suppose if I want to link any other bank account in addition to the ICICI bank I can do it by putting up as a bank account and the rest. Suppose it is the ICICI bank only and no other bank account is considered as the company's bank account then what you have to do is in include these groups and exclude these groups you have to give it as end of list on both the sides. So I will choose your ICICI bank. So once I choose ICICI bank, you just check, check across here. Let's see, at the bottom it is appearing as ICICI bank. So enter. Yes, you come back to the watch type creation screen and accept yes so this is the way we create the bank payment voucher type accept yes right now let me go back to the presentation here yes so same thing we have given there right that type of voucher, payment voucher, the parent voucher, abbreviation, method of voucher numbering automatic, name of the class, enter. <coughs> so here, here I've given as SBI bank, then I've taken as ICI, not an issue, you can choose any bank account. So company uses SBI bank account for all the bank payments that they make. It can avoid selecting the SPI uh, bank account ledger every single time a bank payment transaction has been made. So here, here you have to create the payment uh, class, of course, which you've already done here. If you observe at the bottom, the list of voucher types you have, select bank payment. So let's go and view the uh, vouchers. Now that time, how do we view the vouchers? We went to the chart of accounts. We can also go to the alter option. Press enter. And over there, you have voucher type. Yes. 
So in addition to already existing predefined voucher types, you also have the bank payment voucher. So this is clear to all of you. Okay, escape key. Now here, based on this newly created voucher type, we will go and pass the entries. Yes. So I have a small illustration here. That on 1st of October, The company makes a check payment of one lakh fifty thousand towards the following expenses for the month of September. So here I've given that for the month of September all these expenses were incurred and for which the payment was done by first of October. Now which are the expenses incurred for the month of September? It is rent, salary, Printing and stationery, purchase of furniture, miscellaneous expenses, and bills payment. Now, against it, I've also given the amounts, and most important, I have also given you the different different modes, transaction type. Now, the rent has been paid by way of check, salary through a refund transfer, printing and stationery by cash, purchase of Furnitures by purchase of furniture by check, miscellaneous expenses by Google Pay, bills payment that is current bill, water bill, and telephone bill. Okay, so bills payment, current water, telephone bill, phone pay, all three bills for twenty thousand. So this how do we put up in one particular voucher? Okay, so let's go for it. So here you have the gateway of tally screen. Vouchers. Now what is a function key for a payment voucher? It is F5. So you have to press F5. I hope all of you have got this list of types, voucher types. There is only payment voucher, and one more we have is this bank payment voucher. Okay, so here, what we have to do is we have to select a bank payment voucher. Press enter. And which is the bank which you have associated it is linked it is ICICI bank press enter on that right so here in the bank payment voucher type now here we have to go for the uh, passage of entries one by one so before we uh, start up the entries we can take a break for a couple of minutes because it's a, a very long session of passing the entries and then we can start up. By then you can just log into the bank payment voucher and be ready.
uh, I hope uh, all of you have come back after a short break. Yes. So we were discussing about uh, creation of new voucher types. Yes. So let's continue the same. Okay. So here we have considered or assumed ICICI Bank as the company's uh, bank account. Now here we have a couple of entries to be passed here. Now first one we have is rent. Now rent, what is the amount of rent? It is 30,000. Okay. And uh, we, will, we will check about the modes later. But first let's record the expenses. So first we have this rent. 30. So we'll go back to the tally screen. I think rent pay we already have. We give it as 30. Enter. I mean, yeah, of course, uh, assuming that our company is, is situated in Jainagar, uh, we can keep it as Jainagar only as we have activated the cost categories and cost centers. So just press enter, enter, enter. Bank payment voucher screen. Now, which is the next expense we are having? What is the total amount? It is 50. So we'll put up salary here. But salary we don't have in the list of ledgers. So we have to go to the create option and create a ledger as salary under indirect expenses. Type of ledger not applicable. Cost centers, no. If you want, you can give it as Jainagar. We'll activate since for rent it was Jainagar. So cost centers are applicable, yes. GST not applicable. Okay. Accept, yes. So here we have 50,000. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, for uh, me and my ledger accounts, also the salary is appearing, so I can choose that itself, right? In the list of? In the, in the list of ledger accounts, for me, salary is appearing. So yeah. is it fine by click? I can choose the same account. Yes, 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 you can say. You can do the same. Okay. 50, okay. So name of the cost center is Bangalore. And center, we have chosen general. Now, even though, let me tell you, even though you have, you haven't, you have activated the cost centers, it is fine, not an issue. But since for rent, we are already activated the cost centers uh, for the sake of passing the entries for payments and receipts. So, hence, I'm keeping forth the same. So it is not a compulsion that I have, I must and should go to cost center and activate a Janaga branch. In case if it is there, again, not an issue, okay? So we are just putting up that for the Jayanagar branch. We're recording the entries. If you don't activate the cost center also, it's fine. Works still, the entries can be done, fine? So after rent and salary, which is the next one we're having, the expense? It is printing and stationery, 10,000 rupees. Printing, create. Printing and stationery in that expenses. Ten thousand Bangalore <coughs> Jainagar. Okay, so we have recorded three here rent paid, salary printing and stationery. Now, which is the fourth one? Let's check it out. Purchase of furniture, 30,000. Space bar. Either you can select the furniture itself, not an issue. I think we've already created the furniture ledger, right? 
So you can select the same. Excuse me, ma'am. Amma. Ma'am, is it fine if you don't uh, activate the category, ma'am? No? If you don't activate First category. the category. First initial. category. I did not get it for printing and stationery, ma'am. Not an issue, but not an issue. Okay. Your main is okay. not the cost category or cost center role. It is the main thing is how to update uh, a couple of transactions at one go in one voucher. So here the main talk of the concept is how how can we use a bank payment voucher? We are like it's a secondary uh, you know uh, uh, position we give for cost categories in this case. So just implementing it. That's what. If you're not getting not at all, no nothing to worry. So furniture, what is the amount? It is uh, 30. Now again, after furniture, next we have is this miscellaneous expenses, 10,000. Space bar, create miscellaneous expenses ten thousand Jainagar. Next, we have uh, bills, we have current water and electricity. bill. Now here you can do one interesting portion, only for bills, not for the others. Others, if you have not activated cost category, cost center, it's fine. But if you talk about the bills here, now for the bills, total aggregate amount involved is 20, which I have shown you here. In that 20,000, we have current bill, we have water bill and we have telephone. That's best comp. BWSSB and BSNL, let's assume three bills. Now here, what is the best way to classify or to sub-allocate these expenses? It is cost categories and cost centers. Now only for the bills, you can activate cost categories and cost centers. And over there, we will give the sub-allocation of the expenses. Only for bills, you can activate the cost categories. So what do I do is I will first create the ledger as bills. Okay. Now bills under indirect expenses. Cost center, yes, I would take. GST not applicable. Accept, yes. Now here. You will type the total amount of bill as 20,000. Now, I hope all of you have come for this uh, cost allocation screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, 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 slowly you have to go. Press the space bar. Now, we don't want Bangalore or something. It is like bills under bills we have current water and uh, telephone bill so what we'll do is we'll go to the create option at the top create option is there select the create option and we'll create a new cost category on spot and that will be bills to select as uh, type as bills in the name of the cost category allocate revenue yes non-revenue no Now, under bills, we have, as I told, three. So, space bar. Now, what we have here? Create option. Select the create option. And here, you have to be very careful. You have to choose the right category. If you choose the wrong category, again, cost centers will also be wrong. So, space bar. Once you press the space bar, you get the list of cost categories. And in that, you have to choose bills. And now you can go for first one. I'll go for current. So I'll choose current first, or I can also give it as best comp. Not an issue. 
current bill and a primary itself accept yes now here out of 20,000 we'll assume that the current bill is 10,000 so I'll type as 10 okay I'll type as 10 here for current bill press enter Create water bill. Water bill will be assumed as six thousand and create again it is telephone bill. Two thousand. Okay. So we have current 10, water 6, telephone 4. So it aggregates to a total amount of bill of 20,000. So that this we can make the use of cost categories and cost centers. We can utilize the concept in, in all these ways, in all these routes, provided we are very clear of these concepts. Yes. So here we can give the breakup of the total amount of the bill. So press enter enter yes so here so clearly we can view that the total bill is 20 out of 20 current is 10 water is 6 and telephone is 4 like that okay so press enter yes huh. so I hope all of you have got this right all of you have entered these entries now now in the amount column you uh, I hope all of you have got 1 lakh 50 thousand Okay, as shown on the screen. Now, now, this is the type for you. Press enter. You will come to the bank allocation screen. Okay, now here, we have to go a bit slowly. Now, which is the first one which was uh, uh, passed or which was entered? It was rent, correct? So, you have the ledger name as rent. <coughs> Or in case if ledger name is all, is not appearing for, I think I, I had a question from a few, but the ledger name is not coming. It's fine. But keep an uh, eye on the amount. Now rent we have is this 30, right? So you have to be very conscious that you're giving 30. Okay. Now for, for the rest, if ledger name is appearing, if it is rent, leave it as rent as it is. Transaction type is check. Now how the rent is being paid? Rent is being paid by check for 30,000. So what we'll do here is transaction type, we will retain it as check itself. So I'll press enter on that. Now I have to change the amount from 150 to 30,000. Once you type the amount as 30, press enter. Now you will go to the check number directly. So you have to hear, you have to give the check number of ICICI Bank. So I'll give a simple check number, first check, okay. And here the check date, 1st of April. And without date, as it will not move on for the next one, it will hold you there itself. So compulsory you have to give either 1st of April or 2nd of April. Press enter. Now here, which is the second expense which was entered? It was salary and by e-fund transfer, right? So we here we have a salary by e-fund transfer. So we have to go for salary. So what we'll do is, now we have to change the ledger name from rent to salary. So how can we go there? Which key we have to use? We have to use That's the... Superb, fantastic. We have to use the backspace. Backspace. 
very good pa so all of you are now completely into tally now <laughs> how which key we have to use what is the functional key so i'm pretty happy on that that all of you are now completely into the tally software very good so here now when we press the backspace now we have the list of ledgers so now which is the second one which i told us salary so you have to select salary in the list of ledgers and what is the mode we have transferred salary it is e fund transfer normally we receive three fund only now now we say no check ka zamana gaya you know check is gone cash is gone now we don't even use even uh, no, you know the usual cash also wherever we go we have the qr the scanner code google pay phone pay or paytm paytm is almost like uh, less now more is google pay and phone pay so it's like that b map so full full is a digital pay so rarely we go for cash or check so salary is e fund transfer now e fund transfer what is the total amount of salary 50 type 50 there press enter ha here you have to give the account number bank name of icici bank because icici bank is dispersing salary to the employee okay so here we we have to give i, I think i told you long back when we are using the neft uh, the fund transfers for the contra vouchers i told that in the bank allocation screen you have to give the transferer bank details i hope all of you remember that so here you have to give the icici bank details only so let's assume icici bank is 0001 300 and 1 and here ifsc code of icici bank come as invalid because currently i'm not holding any uh, you know the actual ifsc code of a particular branch so it's fine and uh, the bank name of course space bar specify the bank name here because we don't give the get the list of banks on account of trial version specify bank name then here icici bank ha ah, so here since when we are going for the neft uh, for e fund transfers or even even rtgs along with an neft form we attach a check right uh, so that check number we have to give so here i'll give it as 000002 second check I'll give a simpler one instrument date as usual will be 1st of april now we'll go for the third one now again backspace and rent over salary over now what is next is printing and stationery by cash so you have to choose printing and stationery here now printing and stationery is by cash so we have to go to show more now because in the list of transaction tabs i'm having check keep and transfer others so i'll go to show more now printing and stationery we have given by cash so cash you have two options either atm card but preferably atm because card also we swipe right when i'm going for a purchase so we preferably if, if you're using a hard uh, the uh, hard cash then atm otherwise card so i'll choose atm here since it is by cash and uh, it is 10000 rupees so i'll type 10000 here okay i'll press enter now it will now it will show instrument uh, number so you can just press the space bar to put to put it off okay so it will not appear in case if it is appearing again see once i put it off again it is reappearing not an issue so you can just put it as blank that is zero because it will take the same check so it just put as 10 it will work okay So it's not allow you to give any check numbers over there because so certain times it happens. Even though we take out the check number, it will take again the same check number. So you just put as zero there. There is no check involved when you're going for the ATM. Now, which is the fourth ledger after printing and stationery? It is uh, purchase of furnitures by check. So by check again, uh, first of all the backspace uh, furniture ledger we have to choose. and since we are purchasing furniture by a check we'll take it as check itself and what is the furniture purchase it is 30000 so we'll choose 30000 here enter yes 
and here of course we have to give the check number so again i'll continue i'll give just check number three okay first of april yes next of course space bar a backspace and here we have is miscellaneous expenses by google pay so miscellaneous sundry we say you know in the commerce uh, language the sundry miscellaneous so miscellaneous expenses by Google Pay. Google Pay, obviously, we have to give it as others itself. So we'll go for the others. And what is the amount of uh, expenses here? It is 10,000. So we'll go for 10 here. Again, the same thing. Just give it as zero. First of April. Okay. And the last one we have is this bills. So we've covered everything here. We have bills. And here, how the bills are covered, phone pay I've given. So others you can choose because normally now the bills are paid usually, or I, I can say you can say next to rarity that uh, of course uh, we go to the best com office or the BWSSB to pay the water water bills or the current bills, right? It's all now through Google Pay or Phone Pay. We usually uh, or the Amazon where we pay off all the bills, right? So it's all on a um, uh, click on your phone. That's why I've taken as Phone Pay, Google Pay, anything. So here I choose as others. Yes. Now the total bill amount is twenty. Now in case here you want to break up, you can give a break up that. The first bill you can consider as current bill and 10, then 6 for water, 4. Otherwise, uh, for the bank allocation of total amount, what is getting debited from ICICI bank for the total amount of bills? Now, you, uh, in, the, in the bank payment voucher screen, they have given the breakup that out of 20, current bill is 10, water bill is 6, and telephone is 4. So already one breakup you have given. Now in the bank allocation screen, since the total amount, what is debited from your ICICI bank is 20,000. Aggregate amount for all the bills. You can leave it just like that. Otherwise, if you want to really give again a breakup here, you can give as 10 for current, uh, 6 for water and 4 for telephone. Can be done. So both the ways it's, it's uh, proper itself. So here again, 0 I would give. Yes, so this is the way we go for the multiple payment entries in one particular bank payment voucher. Okay, so enter. Yes. So this is the way we bring up. Now, when there are so many entries, when there are so many transactions to be processed as an accountant, and and uh, with regard to time, I'm I'm having a very short time. I, and in one voucher, how do I process so many payment of expenses, taxes, whatever it can be in one voucher that is bank payment voucher. So see, moment we pass the complete transactions, if you observe in the current balance at the top, like you have your account ICICI bank, at the bottom if you observe, it will also show you the current bank balance, the existing bank balance after processing for 1,50,000. Which means, after uh, passing the uh, the entries, after recording the same, on spot also, you can view your bank balance directly. Yes. So, like this, we can pass the entries. So, narration is as usual, being expenses paid for the. Here I'll give it as month of September for the only reason as a part of your illustration but even though it is holding as april itself it's fine so being expenses paid for the month of september in consideration of your illustration i'm giving paid for okay so this is <coughs> how you pass the entry so if you haven't passed you can just pass it up
Yes. So I hope it's clear for all of you. The bank payment voucher type. Okay, so I hope I've, I've, everybody have got this. Okay, so let's accept it. Accept, yes. Right. Right, so like this we can pass out the entries in tally. So if you go and observe in the day book, of course, the day book, I would again show you one more interesting part that if you're all of you are in the day book from gateway of tally, you have day book. If you press on day book now, now we have so many watchers, right? We have contra, we have payment, we have received, we have journal sales, purchase. We have so many watcher types and for each watcher type, we have entered a couple of entries. Now, if I have to view specifically the payment watchers, I don't want to view any other watcher. I think once I've done, but uh, again, I would just, uh, you know, uh, uh, teach you again that suppose I don't want to view any other watcher. I want to view only payment watcher. I want to filter out my watchers. So what you have to do is you have to press F4. F4 is if you observe on the vertical button bar, F4 is what? It is watcher type. So if you press F4, can you see here you get the list of voucher types and here if I go and select all payment vouchers and press enter I can get only my payment vouchers so like this I can filter up my vouchers I do not view the others which I want as a user I can only view those vouchers okay so in case you want to view the vouchers in detail now here it is showing in a brief up format right so in the day book only you want to view the watchers in detail what is the key you have to use here is it is alt f1 so if you press alt f1 you can view your watchers in detail and then then and there on spot right so this is the way you can go for it okay so it'll show you also total payments made for the month it's one lakh twelve thousand you're showing as the day it will show because as in the day only all the transactions will be entered okay so like this you will get a clarity for that right so after doing a practical exercise on uh, creation of new voucher types automation of invoices and all let's go for the most important segment that is non-accounting vouchers uh, so what are uh, first let me discuss about the non-accounting vouchers so what are these non-accounting vouchers is first of all we'll talk about the accounting vouchers now if i go and talk about the accounting vouchers which are they we have contra payment uh, receipt journal let me go for it Yes, so we have here. So here we have uh, the accounting vouchers, right? We have contra vouchers, payment vouchers, receipt vouchers, journal voucher, sales voucher, purchase voucher, debit note, credit note. We have optional sales voucher. We have memorandum. So optional sales voucher memorandum we have kept it at the last non-accounting non have kept us. But the first until the credit note, they're all the accounting vouchers which means whenever we pass these vouchers from contract to credit note it will affect my financial statements yes it, it can be in any form it can be my cash or bank balances my assets wise liabilities wise it can affect my financial statements in some or the other way it will fluctuate it will affect it will impact but 
if I talk about non-accounting vouchers, it doesn't impact my financial statements at all. Even, even though I pass one voucher, two vouchers, or how, how much ever I pass non-accounting vouchers, it will not impact my books of accounts. It will appear as though I have not passed the entries itself. So that is the impact, that is the effect of non-accounting vouchers. So here for non-accounting we have two, we have optional sales vouchers and we have memorandum vouchers as the non-accounting vouchers. Okay, so so if I pass one contra voucher, it will fluctuate my cash or bank balance. If I pass payment, receive the same thing. <coughs> but if I go for a non-accounting vouchers, as I told, it will not affect my books of accounts. Okay, so let's discuss about these non-accounting vouchers. Now, if I talk about the non-accounting vouchers, What happens is these non-accounting vouchers are also called as unconventional vouchers. Right. So here we have the non-accounting vouchers are also called as unconventional, which means what? As I told, even though it has a record or the entry made, no impact happens. No impact is reflected. So they're also called as unconventional vouchers. Now, these non-accounting are the special vouchers that are used to record the provisional or non-accounting transactions. Now, provisional, you know, you know, it's a like a temporary, a probationary, or it is not a permanent. It does not have a permanent impact, permanent effect. Just as of now, the situation demands at your workspace, and you have to make an entry. You have to pass the entry, but it should not affect my company's books. For on account of certain circumstances, as it all situations demand, an entry has to be passed. So for the for the same, I, I am using a non-accounting voucher. So it is completely temporary probational. So that's why it's a for recording provisional or non-accounting transactions, we go for non-accounting vouchers. So these non-accounting vouchers doesn't affect the regular books of accounts. That's why I've highlighted in red. It doesn't affect the regular books of accounts so it is like non-existing character even though it is present it is assumed that it doesn't exist itself so the two important types of non-accounting vouchers are we have the memorandum voucher and we have a optional sales voucher okay so we have two sets of vouchers here one we have is this memorandum memorandum is also called as a memo voucher in short, we reckon it as memo voucher. Second, we have is this optional sales voucher. Okay, so let's me discuss the first one that is a memorandum voucher. So what do we mean by memorandum voucher? Now here, if I talk about the non-accounting vouchers, non-accounting vouchers are extremely easier to pass uh, when comparatively to the accounting vouchers. But here, one main thing to discuss here is the situation or the circumstance which requires the usage of non-accounting vouchers is very important. To understand that is extremely important. How we pass is easy, but for what purpose do we pass? Under which situation we pass it? That is very important for all of us to know. So that's why I've given this when to use. Under which circumstance should I use a memorandum voucher? So, when you are uncertain about the account to which the amount has to be allocated to when recording the transaction. When the account is determined, the member voucher can be converted into a regular voucher and the transaction can be brought into the books of accounts. Until then, Tally stores these entries in a memorandum register. Okay. So when you're uncertain about the account to which the amount has to be allocated to, but I'm not sure, or for, or for this time sake, for situation sake, I have to pass the entry. I have to save the entry, but it should not affect my company's books. It, that situation, I pass. Once it is all determined, yes, this account has to be necessarily debited 
or credited then I can easily convert the memorandum voucher into a regular voucher and once a memorandum voucher can be converted into a regular regular means it is a from memorandum voucher I'm converting into an accounting voucher contra payment received or whichever voucher once I convert from memo into a regular voucher the transaction will be immediately brought into the books of accounts and once I convert it will automatically impact my financial statements it will affect my financial statements until then if I, uh, where these entries will be kept of course you can view in the day book for sure because day book is the book of original entries where whatever watchers you pass whatever entries you pass all of them appears in the day book yes it's a book of original entry but apart from the day book there is a specific a report a register where you can view all these non-accounting vouchers and that is exceptional reports yes this one so here if you observe of course I would show you once we uh, clear the first one that's memorandum voucher so here under the exception reports we can view the memorandum vouchers optional sales vouchers so one commonly in the day book but apart from that specifically if I view the non-accounting vouchers I have to go to the exception reports which is very important for us to know and there you find all these non-accounting vouchers uh, you know being displayed over there okay so what we'll do is right now we'll not pass on the entries because it's, it's like one uh, you know uh, example a uh, case based example I will be giving you so now in the last moment I don't want to give it up and accordingly we have to pass the entry so uh, th that would be very interesting for all of us so at the next moment I don't want to start uh, this very interesting concept of uh, memorandum so I would just uh, quote a small example you know uh, for making you understand how this memorandum voucher works uh, to pass the entries so until then what all of you can do is so far done uh, revised I mean discussed you can just uh, practice over uh, keep up all your practice consistent I, I think I've uh, I, I hope I've cleared all your doubts uh, which was asked uh, before starting the session as well as in the chat so I hope it's clear for all of you uh, until here Okay. So So I hope whatever practices you're doing do it continually as how you're doing now. Okay? So we'll end up today's session until uh, the discussion of uh, the memorandum vouchers and in the next class we will start up with the discussion of the memorandum and uh, progress with the same fine so uh, we have come up to the end of the yes. session yes ma'am okay. so let's close the program for the day thank you